Hello again, it's Lock Noob on Lock Noob's side channel, Side Noob, and I'm just going to do a short video of reassembling this Master Lock 573 DPF, and it's very similar to an American Lock, apart from the fact that it doesn't have um, five or six pins, it has only a four pin core. It does have these really nice American Locks uh, style serrated pins and spool pins and the serrated key pins down here. Um, but yeah, it's, it's just a nice little lock actually. Maybe not very secure, but a nice little lock and always worth uh, putting back together. So the first thing I'd do is make sure that I have the key in there. If you have the key, do that. It's easy to get your key pins mixed up the wrong way around. You just want to make sure that this, these go in really, really easily and that they all meet the shear line, which is the top of this core, which I've only just noticed is uh, flattened off, which also increases the shear line distance and makes the whole thing easier to pick. Now, somehow I have actually swapped two of those pins over and that isn't actually on purpose um, for the sake of the video. I have accidentally swapped these two key pins over. Um, so we just need to tip those out. I thought one's a bit low, but um, clearly I wasn't paying attention when I did the picking and gutting video and I got these wrong around. So that's why I have the key there. Otherwise uh, you have to pick it um, back together. So there, there, there are all the pins there at shear. That's all fine. So we can, we can take the key out if you like, it doesn't really matter and just rest it somewhere. I've got a little V shaped notch in my pinning tray. So it'll just sit there for now. Next is make sure that springs are in each chamber. I'm just going to look down here and I can see that there is a spring in each chamber. The front of the lock has this cut out here and that's where the lip of the front of the plug goes. So uh, I will get a follower, a little 10 mil follower and put this in like that. And you have to go in through the back one tip is with these is to do it in two halves really. So you'd put the follower all the way in and it just makes it a little bit easier to do say the first uh, pin at the back, which is this serrated pin. And uh, serrated spool, doesn't matter which way around you go on this one because it's the same both sides. So in it goes, then we can slide this all the way back like that and expose just the third pin, gives you a bit more um, purchase on the end. Now these serrated pins actually do go in the, a, a particular way round and to make sure you get maximum serrations I put the bits with the less serrations I guess down so that it touches the spring. So these do have an orientation I'll just uh, show you that again. So if you look here at these serrated pins, you see there's a bit which isn't as serrated at the top and then these serrations. So I want to flip it over so that the top bit is on the springs. Um, and that should mean that you have more serrations interacting uh, with the, the core and the Bible. So there we go, put those in like that, done. Now what we can do is we can uh, slide this in, but again, what I would always suggest is get a shim and put that there. It's just in case any of the pins, uh, the driver pins, might interact with this notch here, which is where the, or groove, should I say, which is where the circlip engages with. So we want to make sure that they don't, then you can slide that all the way in like that, and then remove your follower and your shim. Got a bit of a, a greasy thumb there. Okay, now we can turn it all the way around and lock it back up. We check the key pins are in the right order, so we should be good there. This circlip shouldn't be hard to put on, but don't put it on at that angle like this because it'll just be a right pain. The ends of the circlip will interact with the um, cutout for the key, so just do that and you're absolutely fine. Then we test it with the key. It works perfectly. And now to make sure, and this is a big 
tip here and a big hint is whatever you do, make sure that you get the core in the right way round. So some locks you can actually put the core like this and it'll allow you to then close the lock. And what you'll end up doing is, I don't think this one, this one might not let you, but you can imagine that if, if you do manage to do it, you can get this cover on. What you'll end up with is something like this, where the keyway is being blocked by these guards on the front of that anti-drill plate, uh, making it very, very difficult to pick and very difficult to open. So don't do that. If you look here and you just turn the core this way, that's how it should be so that that, so you're, you can actually tension it and move the whole thing clockwise. Just a tip, whatever you do, make sure you get that the right way round on these American style locks before going any further. There we go. So now we can just quickly get our screwdriver and tighten this up. And again, you don't need to over tighten this, just enough so that it stops gently and that's it. This isn't going to slip out and then we can press it together. Try it with the key. And we're good. There you go. That's our Master Lock 573 DPF fully reassembled and without any drama this time. Well, I hope you enjoyed that. If you like this side content, please consider subscribing. Drop me a comment, like the video, it all helps. And of course, go check out my main channel, Lock Noob. All right, see you all next time.